Hello and welcome to the next video. In this video I want to go over something I had mentioned in one if not two prior videos where I had said that Japanese people are polite but not friendly. So before you pass any judgments, before you rush to type in a comment, um, let me explain. Now everything that I say is based on my opinion, my experiences, experiences of other people that I've spoken to and things I've read and seen. So it is not the be-all end-all story. However, the reason why I came up with polite but not friendly, first of all, it's just an inductive generalization. If you're a philosophy major, you know what I'm talking about. It's based off of experiences that I personally had. Doesn't mean all Japanese people are the same. They definitely are not. Um, doesn't mean that they're rude, definitely they're not, uh, very few of them in fact. But, again, it's based off the experiences that I had. And part of the reason why I came up with this phrase was based on of my experiences. And I'm going to go through why I think this is the case. And there's several things on this list. Number one, work. Japanese people work a lot. They usually get up very early in the morning, they're in the office at maybe 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, and continue well past 6 o'clock on most days. After they finish work, they'll usually do some kind of team building uh, exercises, and this usually consists of going out to dinner with your co-workers, having a few drinks, and decompressing from the day. So it's time for them to, you know, Badmouth the company, badmouth the procedures, the policies, uh, things that they don't like, let off a little bit of steam and relax and have fun. And in many cases, these parties end maybe 10, 11, midnight, sometimes even later, depending. And they will probably have missed the last train if, you know, it's past midnight. But if they're able to get back home, then there's really not much time for anything else. It's basically take a shower go to sleep, and repeat this again. And in many cases, they work six days a week. So you can imagine they are overworked. So they don't have a lot of extra time. Which brings me to the second point. Leisure time. Because they're working so much, they're going to have less and less leisure time. So whether they're engaged in hobbies like painting, tea ceremonies, archery, photography, hiking, or any number of things that Japanese people do. Now they're going to have less time to do those things. And if we take the time that they're spending at work, and take the time when they're engaged in their leisure activities and, and or hobbies, now you've got an even smaller amount of time in which to make friends or be friendly. So, third thing, familial obligations. If the person has kids, has a spouse, has extended family. Now they've got even less time to go out and make friends and be friendly with people. They're going to have to juggle very little leisure time they have and put it into maybe helping their kid with homework, uh, parenting, taking them, maybe taking them to school or picking them up or preparing meals or help, you know helping them with any kind of projects that they have. Same thing if their spouse needs assistance with something. Well. When they're outside of work, that's basically when it's going to get done, and that's in their leisure time, which they're going to have even less of now. So those things all decrease and decrease and decrease the time that they can spend being friendly with people and making new friends and so on. Next point. They're shy. Japanese people, generally speaking, and I don't think anybody will ar argue this, are shy they are very very shy so with that also against them it's hard for them to go out and make friends with people they're part of it is the culture they go to school and they're taught you have to follow things a uniform way things have to be done a specific way you can't have that hair color you can't have that hairstyle you can't wear anything that's not the uniform same thing with work life the procedure is this you must do this this is the person in charge their ideas are you know doctrine you cannot argue it, and that's how it is. You have to go to this team building event after work, and you have to do, you know, even if it's every day in the week, 
or you have to take this business trip or, or whatnot. There's a lot of things that they have obligations to. And so there's even less and less and less time. You see the pattern here? Less time. No time to make friends. You know? And because they're taught to follow things a specific way, they're not going to necessarily go out of their shell to make friends. Or it's not going to be as easy for most of them. Right? There are exceptions, of course. I know of two Japanese people that I'm still in contact with who I consider friends. Now, because of the time difference and, you know, just infrequency of messages, we obviously don't talk as often. I still consider them my friends. They could consider me an acquaintance, and that's fine. That's okay. All right? Next point. Um, language barrier. Obviously a big one. If you don't speak Japanese and they don't speak your foreign language, in my case English, there's not going to be a lot of communication. So it's going to be hard to be friends with somebody if you can't communicate basic ideas with them. On top of the fact that they're shy. On top of the fact that they have familiar obligations. On top of the fact that they have, um, you know, leisure time that they're trying to use up for things. On top of the fact that they're overworked. So all of these things lead me to, my, to conclude that they're polite, which they are. You ask for something, they go out of their way. Uh, I've rarely seen customer service as good as what I saw in Japan. And not just like when you're going into a shop. I mean, if you if you have a little bit of Japanese and you ask someone for directions or something, they will help you to degrees that I will have not seen in other places from other people, including my own countrymen. However, if you're looking to be friends with a Japanese person, they have to be very economical with their time. Which brings another point. They have to plan everything out. As I said, there's a huge list of things here that have, you know, put demands on their time. So they have to schedule things out. What I used to hear was, oh, it has to be scheduled out about a month in advance. My own personal experience, especially when I was dating people and or had more acquaintances there, it was a week to two weeks out. It was like, okay, what are you doing the following Saturday? Oh, that doesn't work? Okay, what about uh, the, f you know, the Sunday after that? And a lot of times, they were already booked up between work, their personal lives, and everything else that was going on. You know, and friendships, unfortunately, couldn't be formed. Um, so again, I didn't say this to be mean-spirited. I didn't say this to insult them. Um, and I know in my prior video I sound a little bit angry, which I kind of was. So I just thought I'd clarify it here a little more calmly and, you know, in a more logical, reasoned way. If you still disagree with me, fine. Be respectful. Go ahead and put your comments below. Whether you think that I'm right, why you think I'm right, or if you've had similar experiences or if your experiences have differed to what I have mentioned, go ahead and leave it below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.